The McLeod RST is going to be one of the best options available to hold up to 800 horsepower in your manual 11 through 17 GT or 12 to 13 Boss 302. Now, this particular combination, guys, includes the twin disc RST clutch, along with the matching McLeod aluminum flywheel, all for right around the thousand dollar price point. So in the world of aftermarket clutches, McLeod is no doubt gonna be one of your more premium options that you'll encounter here on the site. And I think you'll find they offer a wide variety of clutches for many different applications. For instance, you got your stock or light bolt-on stuff, all the way down the spectrum to your thousand plus horsepower manual monster and everything in between. So with that said, what do you say we take a closer look at the RST combination and just who this might apply to? So the clutch we are looking at here today is one of the big boys from McLeod. It is the Twin Disc RST, which again is capable of holding upwards of 800 horsepower. And as someone who has had this same exact clutch and flywheel set up in my mid 10 second S197, I can attest that this clutch is built to handle some abuse and at the same time does offer fantastic pedal feel. Now, with all that said, the RST obviously isn't going to be the best bet for someone who is looking to stay stock or maybe be satisfied with light bolt-ons because, quite frankly, this is going to be overkill for your setup. However, if you're already making big power or looking to make big power through forced induction or nitrous, or again, planning to do that build down the road, then this is certainly going to be a solid option to consider. Now, twin discs are a thing of beauty, in my opinion, because most of the time you're going to be getting unparalleled holding capabilities thanks to the increased surface area of two friction discs. But again, with pedal feel that won't kill your leg in traffic. Again, you can look forward to a very, very light pedal with the RST installed. Now, the only downside to something like this, guys, is that these twin disc clutch applications usually are not cheap, right? This one in particular is going to be just around a thousand bucks, but you have to keep in mind that you're also getting a matching aluminum flywheel with this particular combination. If you already have a flywheel that you want to use, certainly can save yourself a couple hundred bucks and just check out the RST by itself. But speaking of the flywheel, at least that is included with this kit, it is an eight bolt unit, has been constructed from lightweight 6061 T6 aluminum, and is gonna weigh in right around 11 pounds. So big time weight savings compared to the cast iron stocker that you are gonna be replacing. Now, this kind of weight savings on the engine, the rotational mass, will help the car rev a bit quicker, of course, along with pull through those gears a little bit better as well. Flywheel itself is zero balanced, and last but not least, has been given that SFI certification. But getting into the specifics here with the RST, you're gonna find that both the clutch discs here, or the friction discs, are gonna feature that organic friction compound uh, those discs are separated by what's called a floater plate. And then finally, everything is topped off with this nice bright red pressure plate. Now, I really love the organic material here for the MT82 in particular because, yes, it's going to offer that awesome street ability we just talked about. Yes, it's going to offer the holding power needed to support upwards of 800 plus horsepower, but without the aggressive engagement, of the metallic clutch discs, which can be found in McLeod's RXT clutch. Uh, that's the next step up. We'll handle about a thousand horsepower, but the more aggressive material in those clutch discs have been known to be a little bit rough on the stock MT82 transmission. Now, just a quick heads up here, guys. It's not totally uncommon to pick up a little added noise from a twin disc clutch, either at idle or through some of the lower RPM range when you're kind of lugging the car a bit. Um, that's just simply due to the design, the floater plate, and so on. Uh, definitely want you guys to be aware of that before pulling the trigger. And it is something a lot of the customers have mentioned in the customer review section. As always, guys, read up on those to get some honest real world feedback from other owners out there besides myself who have installed this clutch, let you know how they enjoy it, um, things they like, and even maybe some things that they don't like. But getting back to that noise, it just kind of comes with the territory with a twin disc clutch. And let's be honest, most of the time, you can't really hear it that well over a loud exhaust setup or the radio. But let's switch gears here completely, pun intended, and talk about the install a little bit. And listen, guys, if you've never done something like this before, it can be a bit difficult. 
especially if you don't have access to a lift. So that's why the site's just gonna automatically kick this one up to a full pull, three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. They call it about four hours to complete from start to finish, but I always like to say, leave yourself a day, maybe even a weekend, especially if this is your first time ever trying this job. Not terribly difficult to drop a transmission, but again, there are a few steps involved and there is some heavy lifting. But to give you guys a better idea of just how this exactly will go down, we actually have an AM customer to walk you through the job now. Check it out. How's it going, everybody? My name's Mario, and today we're gonna to be installing a twin disc clutch on my 2013 Ford Mustang. So the first step we're gonna do is remove the cables from the battery. Because we'll be removing the starter from underneath and we don't want to shock nothing. Now we're on the inside of the car. We're gonna remove the shift knob by turning it counterclockwise. Put that there. We're gonna remove this base. Leave that there. We'll open this. We'll open up your rear armrest. Pull from the back. Just so. And then there's three clips up here. Pull towards the rear. Pull up. I'll just leave that there. Now you want to keep all this sound detonating and be careful not to rip it. Because we're going to be reusing this. Now we're going to remove the isolator for the transmission tunnel and the shift boot. Give that a good tug. There you are. Now we'll raise the car up and remove the components from the transmission for the shifter. All right, so now that we have the car raised, locked and secured, you always want to make sure you give it a good shaking. Make sure it's secured. Now, first and foremost, we're gonna get some WD-40. We're gonna insert all the Now we'll let that soak in. Now we're just going to go around, disconnect all the connectors to the O2 sensors and any, anything that's connected to the transmission. So let me put this down. All right, so now we lowered the vehicle all the way down. And after letting the WD-40 seep into the threads in the nut, we're going to get the exhaust bolt for the catalytic converter all the way down there. The way we're going to do that is we got about 21 and a half inches of reach with a 15 millimeter socket. This is a 3H drive. I'm just gonna feed it all the way straight down. This is about the easiest way to get access to that nut. All the way down there, and you're just gonna wanna remove it. Now it's, it pays off to soak it multiple times with WD-40 or any type of penetra penetrating oil. All right, so it's pretty much loose enough that I can remove it by hand. So what we're gonna do now is raise the vehicle. All right, so now we raise the vehicle back up again and we're gonna disconnect all, all the O2 sensors there's a plug right here. It's always best to push in, squeeze the releasing tab, pull it out, then push in, push out. It's always better that way. Now you want to remove the harness from the actual transmission so you don't have nothing tugging down. 
anymore. Next step is to remove the H pipe and the color converters with 15 millimeter socket. And then we're gonna go back here, remove this clamp as well and remove the whole entire exhaust to gain access to the drive shaft and the transmission cross member and get ready to remove it. We're removing the 15 millimeter nuts for the catalytic converters. We'll let that hang there. We're gonna mount the camera and drop the exhaust. Okay, so we let the catalytic converters hang on the reinforcement bar. So now he's gonna assist me with holding the rear. Now, as you can see, we removed the whole exhaust. Now it's time to remove the drive line, get that out of the way. In order to remove the drive line, there's two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the center support bearing. And then you have, let's see, two, four, six bolts on the yoke. There's six 10 millimeter bolts. drop this and then let's break loose these bolts. Now on the transmission side there's four bolts we have to remove. As you guys can see there there's four bolts coming from the transmission side. These are going to be 12 point sockets. So that's the next step and then we can get remove the drive line. Okay so now we have a 12 millimeter socket with a 12 point. Now we already broke these bolts loose and the way we did it was I had Chewy go up inside, pull the e-brake. What that does is it'll lock the rear wheels so you can spin the drive line and get access to whatever corresponding bolt you're breaking loose. And when he pulled the e-brake, of course it locked this and it allowed me to break this loose. But uh, now the transmission is in neutral. We have the e-brake off. And uh, as you can tell, I broke all these bolts loose already. And when the e-brake's off, I'm able to spin it. So we'll take these bolts off. Again, this is a 12 point, 12 millimeter socket. And I'm using a 3 h drive. So you watch your heads. Now, I'm gonna let this yoke. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to let it sit right there. We're going to go ahead and uh, loosen up the drive shaft. Alright, 
right, so now we're gonna collapse it inward. Choose a spot to remove it. Drop it down just like this. Now we have complete access to the shifter. Now this isn't the factory shifter, so it's a little bit different process. However, now we have these one and two 13 millimeter bolts. We'll remove that, letting us remove the shifter body out from underneath. All this assembly can stay with the transmission and it helps us to hold the transmission because it's solid mounted. Now, our next step is to remove the starter. And cross member bar. Okay, so we secured the vehicle at a height and put the lockers down. So we're gonna use a 15 millimeter six point socket. We're gonna use a 3 8 ratchet with a six and a half inch extension and a 10 millimeter six point socket. And we're gonna, I already broke these loose, but we're gonna remove these two bolts that are hold the starter to the bell housing. I don't know if it'll come out on the video, but you, you can see these coolant stains on my bell housing. Uh, disregard that, I had faulty heater core hoses that I already replaced but those are the stains that stayed and like at the beginning of the video we disconnected the battery so none of this will arc out or short out so you can feel comfortable around the starter we'll remove that and remove the upper 10 millimeter bolt It is good to support the starter from the rear. That way it doesn't hang on the bolt and make it a little bit more tougher. Feels like I've backed it out all the way, so I'm gonna reach up there, pry it upward to the rear. And just like that, the starter is dropped. So now the next step, is to remove the cross member for the transmission. And once we do that with the transmission jack, we'll be able to leverage it down so we can reach up towards the top bolts of the bow housing. We're gonna grab a 19 millimeter socket. Again, the transmission jack is supporting the transmission. We actually have pressure going upward, so it's not gonna fall. Break these bolts loose. So once you have the transmission supported, only when you have the transmission supported, you can go ahead and start lowering it. You want to be mindful of the connectors on top, the heater core hoses, anything that corresponds with the engine and the cylinder heads on top. As you see, we have total control with this transmission jack. So the next step is we're going to use a 13 millimeter. And again, this vehicle is equipped with the MGW Ray Spec Short Shifter. So 13 millimeter bolts, there's three of them. Let's just take off this body. You have more room to drop the tra transmission. All right, so we've removed all the bell housing bolts. So lower the transmission. Okay, so we're gonna remove the pressure plate bolts. 13 millimeter. Right 
I would suggest you move the top bolts first. There we go, it's hanging back. These bolts, we'll put a hand, press up against it. We'll hold it. Okay, remove these two. Like this. And the pressure plate is going to come down just like that. Now we have access to the fly nails, which are two, four, six, uh, two, four, six, eight bolts. And they're six point, so they're probably going to be a 17 or so. So let me get that. We got, we got a half inch to three eighths adapter. We're going to hit this with a half inch gun. Okay, so we broke them all loose. Now be cautious, we leave leaving one bolt because the firewall is heavy. So we want to keep a hand on that. Go ahead and release that and then you just want to wobble it. Just give it a good old shaking. And it'll walk off like that. Now this is a flex bait and this is, if your rear main seal was leaking, this would be a good opportunity can place the rear main seal if it was leaking. If not, well, we'll continue with the flywall installation. This is a flex plate. Now you want to make sure this whole area is clean because uh, you don't want any debris, grease, or anything like that coming from the original clutch to contaminate your RST twin disc. So it's a good idea to just clean this thoroughly brake cleaner paper rag it'll do wire brush but yeah clean this whole area that way when you install your twin disc there's no contaminants that will make your clutch slip Okay, so we took the flywheel bolts already. As you can see, all these are bolted down. We'll put the pilot alignment tool. Now this blue mark, this blue paint, is for the alignment of the disc, the flywheel, and the pressure point. So we'll get that right now. Now on your pressure or on your flywheel, you'll have a little line paint mark. It'll align the studs just as so. As you can see, it's aligned. So now we'll put the corresponding nuts. Okay, so we're gonna torque the three floater nuts. 25 foot pound. There we go. There we go, 25 foot pounds. Now, the next step is to torque down the pressure plates to 35 foot pounds. So we'll go ahead and set that zero out the torque wrench. And when you install the pressure plate, you gotta make sure the alignment marks are exactly how they left them. In this case, we have them towards the bottom. We'll 
hold that there. All right, so after we finished torquing down the clutch, we installed the transmission and we've installed all the bolts all the way around. Now there's two top bolts that we'll get to from above the car. After that, we ran the wiring harness for the O2 sensors, speed sensor and all that. The shifter has been installed already. The next step is to put the drive line up and the exhaust. Alrighty everybody, just finished installing the clutch line, filled the, uh, the reservoir up with fluid, we're pumping the clutch. Now at first the clutch pedal is just going to drop to the floor, got to sit here and work it by hand. As you can see, still needs some pumping, but you go cycle that, make sure it's in neutral. We've already turned on the car. Everything's good. Just now need to pump the clutch. Just like that, we're finished. Clutch system is bled. Interior's back together. So wrapping things up guys, if you're looking for a proven clutch to handle your high horsepower application while still maintaining great pedal feel and drivability, you have to check out the RST and flywheel combo from the cloud right here at AmericanMuscle.com.